let me set a scene for you. It's a dark, silent night as you're sitting in your room with the lights switched off, light only emitting from a CRT television screen, drawing you in. On the TV is a video game you used to play as a kid. Nothing or no one is around to take your attention away. Just you and your game. There's something kind of creepy about this, right? Can't be the only one. Like, I don't know, there's just something about it that evokes this feeling of loneliness. This almost desolate, yet nostalgic vibe that takes you back to a time long forgotten. What's up with this feeling? Why can remembering something from your past make you uncomfortable, even if there's nothing necessarily off-putting about it? And why can that feeling be given off from media so much? Well, I want to discuss this topic for a while. Why does certain media evoke a feeling of loneliness, whether it be from photographs, video games, music, television, movies, whatever? Also, just for the record, I'm not an expert on any of these subjects. I just thought it'd be a neat thing to talk about. I'm no wordsmith, nor do I claim to be. See, sometimes I'll look at something, anything really, and become overwhelmed with an unsettling emotion, or get goosebumps over it. it can be something as simple as the Disney advertisements present on a childhood DVD. Example, remember the Disney Vault? See, before the age of streaming whatever movie you want whenever you want, you actually had to go out and buy a VHS or DVD if you wished to watch it again. And Disney played into this heavily, by only releasing their movies on these platforms for a very limited time, to try and play into FOMO. That's fear of missing out for the uneducated. They would say that you better be sure to get it in the time frame before it gets locked into the Disney vault. Who knows when it'll be seen again? That scared me. <laughs> I guess it was the idea of there being this actual physical vault filled with old movies that I could just never see or know about. There's something creepy about lost media in a way, like you're learning about something that wasn't meant for the public eye. I recall years back feeling pretty unnerved when I'd watch videos about the lost Dare with Spongebob movie at night, especially the supposed theme song. It's the juxtaposition of listening to this seemingly innocent, jolly song in the dead of night, alone in your room. It's pretty normal to be scared of a horror movie or a scary video game, but something as seemingly innocent as this? Why does it make you feel like that? Well, let's jump right into it. I'm gonna go over a variety of subjects that's very personal to me, and who knows, maybe you'll relate to some of them too. And let's try to figure out why they give off this feeling of loneliness and sadness. Well, melancholy. Melancholy is the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Anyways, let me go over some stuff that's caused me to feel this way, and see if you can relate. Or we can put the pieces together to discuss why it makes you feel that way. But first, speaking of tonal whiplash, I just got this huge package sent to me by Manscaped.com, filled with many amusing men's grooming products. This video is sponsored by Manscaped.com. Manscaped offers the best tools and liquid formulations for your body. They hooked me up with this all-in-one performance package 4.0. Check it out, it's got the Lawnmower 4.0 body trimmer, with waterproof trimmers and advanced skin safe technology. They even sent this wireless nose and ear hair trimmer, deodorant, and look, for a limited time you can get all this, plus two free gifts. The shed travel bag and boxer briefs. So go to manscaped.com today and get 20% off, plus free international shipping, plus two free gifts when you use promo code Alice Checkout. If that doesn't sound frickin' epic, then I don't know what does. And thanks to manscaped.com for sponsoring this video. Alright, let's begin. Starting with probably the area in which I get the sensation most with. Much like most kids, a majority of my time when I was younger was spent playing video games. I grew up with two sisters, which meant I got my PlayStation 2 all to myself, but that also meant I was alone a lot while playing. And because of this, it caused some of the more innocent games I would play to come off a lot more creepy to me, whether it be from the atmosphere, the content within the game itself, or things that were happening around me while playing it, that my brain and I forever associates with said game. Case in point? Super Mario 64. Now I've heard this one from a lot of people. I know I'm definitely not the only one to get weird vibes off of Mario's first 3D adventure. This is such a common trend that it even started up the whole every copy of Mario 64 is personalized rumor, which basically stated that everyone's individual copy of Super Mario 64 would adapt to you, meaning no two copies were the same. This game just feels empty. There's too many examples to count when it comes to areas that crept me out, so let's just go over a couple of the major ones. Starting with the game's fucking hub world. Yeah. Peach's Castle. It's kinda scary. There's just something about it that feels so mysterious, like there's more hidden under the surface that you're never supposed to see. You gotta remember, as a kid unless you had friends who already played it, or a magazine, you were pretty much going in blind. And that's how it was for me. Peach's Castle has so many nooks and crannies that it felt like a never-ending maze. Shit like the basement flooding with water, the random vortex in the floor, the boo that if you grind pound on it will send you to this giant haunted mansion. It felt like everything here was set up to make you get lost. What doesn't help this feeling of claustrophobia or the hills? blocking you from escaping. You feel like this area exists within such a small vacuum. You truly feel alone, and ends up making the atmospheric birds chirping in the background give off a much more empty feeling. Beyond that, however, we have the actual stages themselves, and two of them always stuck with me as a kid. Dire Dire Docks and Wet Dry World. Why Dire Dire Docks? The music. 
That's all. Many people love this song, but I still to this day cannot stand listening to it. There's just something so deceptively calming about it, where I never feel truly safe. I'm wet dry world because I don't even get what this stage is even trying to be. Being on one of the earliest consoles capable of having fully 3D models and such, it causes the game to look quite primitive in certain areas. And I think all the limitations from the time combined to make this level feel pretty unnerving. First of all, we're confined to this very small area of land, with the skybox being of this random real life city with a water filter over it, makes you feel like you're all on your own, segmented from civilization, floating on a platform in midair. Even then, the city being submerged underwater implies that it's been destroyed, no longer inhabited by anyone, which is further shown through the empty houses you can find underwater. Nobody could live here. You feel truly alone, like you're traversing a place that has been lost to time. I get a similar feeling while playing Gary's Mod single player, which mostly just has you walking around source engine maps. You're seeing something familiar, except it's completely barren and empty. It gives it this almost post-apocalyptic feel, like you're the only one left alive and off to spend the rest of eternity by yourself, just you and your thoughts. Your thoughts aren't always your friend. It gets so quiet that you almost expect something to jump out at you like a monster or something, but it never comes. So you simply remain on edge waiting for something that doesn't exist. There's a game out there that gives me this feeling like no other though, and I don't think a single person out there will be able to understand other than me, because it is such a specific scenario. But I feel like I should mention it anyway, so I could have some form of closure on the subject. The Simpsons Hit and Run. Let me explain. See, as a kid, I lived in a pretty big house. Long ways, that is. Meaning we had this extremely long hallway that led to all of our bedrooms. And at the other end of this hallway was our kitchen and living room. Now, I have had multiple nightmares as a kid where I'd be standing in this hallway, only to see something at the end of it that's chasing me, and now I have to sprint to the other end as fast as I can, usually feeling and waking up as soon as I get caught. But I recall one day when I was left in this house all alone, I spent my time sitting in the living room playing Simpsons Hit and Run on my PS2. But the interesting thing about this game is that if you're just walking around the hub, world, no music is playing. Only if you get in a car. It's just quiet, atmospheric sounds, usually just your feet tapping. And being alone in this big house with no sounds to distract me, allowed me to hear every single tiny detail that I otherwise would have never noticed. The random creaks in the floor from the house settling, our old CRTs down in the rooms randomly making loud noises because of how heavy they were. And all I could do to distract myself from this was slowly walk around the hub world, a giant, lifeless hub world. I'm pretty sure it got so overwhelmingly creepy that I just sat in the corner of the room until my family got out. It doesn't help that I also had this giant fear of the Teals doll around that time, and thought he was trying to kill me when I was by myself, but th that, that was a video for another channel. Point being, despite there being nothing necessarily creepy about the game itself, it's instead what I associate it with in the real world that causes it to be unsettling for me. I feel like most people can relate to that, even if not that example specifically. But there's a ton of stuff that I now associate with random memories from my past that then become unnerving to me, and nothing plays into that more than music. It's so much easier for music to become creepy to you than something like a game, I feel. You can listen to music literally anywhere, so it's more likely that you're going to associate a song with something that made you scared. And a big one for me happens to be space music. I think I just have a fear of space in general. The idea of endlessly floating alone in a void, millions and millions of stars all around you, light drawing you in that you'll never reach. There was a Toys R Us near me that closed on well over a decade ago. I was only ever in it a handful of times, but I vividly remember one of those visits. There was a large stairway in the middle of the store, leading up to the second floor. And as you climbed the stairs, there was this giant mural on the wall, which featured a variety of Disney characters along a film reel, floating in space. Something about that always stuck with me. Maybe it's because as I was walking up the stairs, I felt like I was on level with the mural, no longer looking up at it, I was beside it. Gave me that vibe that I was also floating in space. And I don't know. I guess that idea is kind of scary to me. I remember I had a dream that night. Not a nightmare, but it wasn't exactly pleasant either. I was floating alone in space, nothing around me but a giant film reel looming over. Maybe it was the concept of seeing something in space that wasn't supposed to be there, but I guess I kind of developed a fear of space because of this. And this especially developed a certain types of music becoming very unsettling to me. I love Mario Galaxy. It's a great game. Great music too. But one day I decided to let the intro theme play out, the bombastic orchestra eventually fading away, and what followed was a very calming piano piece, with faint space-like signs off in the distance, as the screen shows you the dark void of space. I can't explain why, but this fucking terrifies me. Maybe it's the unknown mystery of space paired with a familiar piano sound, but either way I hate listening to it. But there's one song that also comes to mind when I think about music that scares me. about you. The Sonic Mega Collection menu theme. A song that many people adore, calling it one of the best songs in the series. Ever since I was a little kid that scared the hell out of me. But why? I'll never know. Plain and simple.
And I think at this point I've come to terms with the fact that I'll never know why this song makes me feel the way it does. And instead I've learned to appreciate it, you know? It's kind of cool in a way. That there's something out there that can make me feel such an emotion. Something that can make me feel truly, truly alone. Music is a powerful thing. It can make you question your very existence. Even if unintentionally. And I think that's pretty darn cool. Still creepy though. The only thing I think can be creepier than music is TV. Everybody can relate to watching TV. Okay, well, maybe not anymore, but as a kid, definitely. I would watch TV from the second I got home from school until I was going to bed. And when you're watching so much content, obviously not all of it is going to be retained. Being lodged away deep in your memory, where it'll possibly never resurface. Isn't that scary to think about? How much stuff that has happened to you that you will never, ever remember, no matter how hard you try. You just gotta wait for the day when someone says, Hey, remember Button Moon? And suddenly it all comes back. Oh, television shows is another thing that can make me feel very easily uncomfortable. Heck, clearly a lot of other people too. This can be seen with the resurgence of every single person ever adding a phony VHS filter to their stuff to make it appear more creepy. Hey guys, wanna see something cool? Boo! I would stay up to all hours of the night watching TV. And because of that, I was exposed to a lot of stuff from before my time. Networks would play old 70s and 80s shows later in the night. But because they were only ever shown at night, it means that I can only ever associate them with the memory of sitting alone in a pitch black dark room in my pajamas with the bright light emitting from the TV. Also, to make it worse, there's just something inherently creepy about old British cartoons, especially the theme song. This was the theme song to Button Moon, as I mentioned previously. It's the idea that beyond this simple little set, there's nothing. Just, just the emptiness of space. There are a lot of shows I remember finding scary as a kid. One of them was Rainbow, which also has a theme song you wouldn't want to listen to alone in the dark. Rainbow, up above the streets and houses, rainbow climbing high. It's almost too innocent in a way. You feel like there's something sinister beneath the surface that you're not supposed to know about. This type of feeling has seen a massive resurgence in popularity over the past couple of years, especially with the idea of liminal space. Ding, ding, ding. There we have it, folks. It took 15 minutes, but I finally said the word liminal. I feel like the idea of liminal spaces has become completely watered down with the more mainstream it's become. What was once used to describe a location between two states of being now just means any dark room with nobody in it. Oh wow, that's kind of unsettling. I feel like I've been in a place like that before. Same with this one. It looks a lot like my old school, and seeing it in a new light like this is always creepy. That's just the fucking Aqua Teen Hunger Force room. But despite this, you know, whether or not these can be described as liminal species, that still doesn't negate the way they make you feel. Evidently, they cause you to feel some kind of emotion. I'll always find the ones that depict play areas, or schools at nighttime, the most creepy. It's the idea of seeing something in a state of which it was never supposed to be witnessed, alone and empty. I think this is also because of nostalgia. You almost insert yourself into these images. You can swear you've been in a place exactly like this before, but can't pinpoint where it was or when it happened. You try to dig through your memories to no avail. I had some friends come and visit me a couple months back, and in the middle of the night we all decided to go out back and walk around the outskirts of my house. Living in Ireland, the outskirts of my house is a bunch of fields. But as we were walking down the pathway, we would pass old abandoned rundown farms and houses from hundreds and hundreds of years ago, the mist barely covering it, slight rustles in the bushes from nearby badgers and foxes. It was incredibly atmospheric. But as I was turning to go back, I realized one of my friends had gone missing. Oh no, I thought. And as I started turning back to look for them, this euphoric feeling slowly left me, and instead turned into this unsettling fear of the unknown around me. Where are those badgers and foxes? What if someone else is around? It's so quiet. Are they able to hear every step I take? What about my breathing? What if they took my friend? As I was thinking this, my mind racing with a thousand thoughts at once, I approached a shadowy figure. It was my friend. They were standing on a gate completely silent. I couldn't understand why, so I approached them, and that's when I saw it. Nothing. Over the gate was an empty field. You could barely even see the grass because of the mist. It felt like I was staring into an abyss, like I had reached the end of the world and nothing stood in front of me. So we all just stood there for a while in silence. It's a memory I'll always appreciate. The darkness should have been scary. It should have been ambient and unnerving. My mind should have been racing, worrying about the unknown, at what could be out there in front of me. But instead I felt this weird sense of acceptance, that everything was gonna be okay, and nothing could take me away from the odd sense of peace I had at that very moment. These other things I talked about today caused me to feel the exact opposite emotion. It's a feeling of pure dread and sadness. But why does thinking about nostalgic things from your past cause you to feel this way though?
I guess I'll never know. Maybe because it causes you to think about life in general. You think about how much things may have changed since that point. You think about the people you may have had that are no longer around. The places you could visit that no longer exist. It makes you wonder if 10 years from now you'll get the same feeling looking back on right now. Maybe it makes you think about how hard life is. Maybe you yearn for the past because of this. You wish for a simpler point where you could just sit and waste your time when you had no responsibilities. It takes you back to a time when you can just sit and watch TV all day and not care. Or a point where you would get scared at the prospects of being left alone in your house. Or maybe it just gets you reflecting on the way things are now. I don't know. Maybe you don't like it. Maybe you wish life would stop moving so fast and you could just enjoy things for the way they were. But you know what? I like this feeling. Reminds you that you're human in a way. That these very few memories that you hold near and dear to you can invoke such an emotion. Even if it be dread or sadness or, or even loneliness. This is the feeling I got when I had to sit through every single episode of Family Guy.